Oh, man. Okay, Ryan Garcia. Obviously, Ryan Garcia has been in the news like crazy. Now he's in the news for another reason. Um, he was doing a live stream with, I don't know who this girl is. Um, I don't know if this is his girlfriend. I don't know if this is just somebody who's interviewing him. I don't know if, if this is just his friend. I have no idea, but I can't scroll down because her outfit is is a lot. I can't I can't show y'all the outfit. It's a lot. But somebody asked this question um, to Ryan Garcia on live stream. They said, if you believe in Jesus, why did you divorce your wife? And why do you follow so many girls on Instagram? Which to a lot of people, they might not like this question. Um, some people might say, oh, you're fruit watching and, you know, worry about yourself, worry about your own relationships, not being, you know, judgmental and all this type of stuff. Right. But I think it's a valid question. I think it's a valid question. So I wanted to play this video to get your opinion on this. Um, let's just get right into it. Uh Oh, it's no sound. <laughs> Give me a second. Hold on. Um, let me, let me take the, let me take it off mute. Let me take it off mute. Let me let me zoom back in and scroll up. All right. Let's go. If you believe in Jesus, why did you divorce your wife and why do you follow so many girls? Damn, on Instagram? bro. Damn, that's a crazy. Transition. That sounds like that sounds like a girl that's mad. What transition? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. I'll answer that, but um, yeah. I mean, things in life happen. I mean, Obviously, it says in the Bible that you could have a position where you could divorce your wife for a certain reason. Whether those reasons are valid to me or you, it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, I thought it was the best decision for me to move forward in my life. I still have a great relationship with my kids and my ex-wife. So, you know, the only ones that are mad are the ones in the comments at the end of the day. And before somebody tries to come for me and say... Nick, why are you watching Nala Ray videos? Bruh, I was literally watching them because she just came to Jesus and I'm trying to learn more about her. I already, I know why y'all, I already, I, I, I can see how y'all be thinking. Anyway, that was a very strange, uh, that was a very strange response. You know what? Let's listen again. Ask, if you believe in Jesus, why did you divorce your wife and why do you follow so many girls damn, on Instagram? Damn, bro, damn, that's a crazy that transition. That sounds like, that sounds like a girl that's mad. What transition? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'll answer that, but um, yeah, I mean, things in life happen. I mean, obviously it says in the Bible that you could have a position where you could divorce your wife for a certain reason. Whether those reasons are valid to me or you, it doesn't matter. You know, and then so he said there's positions in the bible that says that you can divorce your right your wife for certain reasons whether those reasons are valid to you or to me or not it doesn't matter hey, i thought it was the best decision for me to move forward in my life i still have a great relationship with my kids and my ex-wife so you know the only ones that are mad are the ones in the comments at the end of the day okay so i mean uh the uh, we're we're going to get into to those reasons. Um we've talked about those reasons before here on the channel. Those reasons um you know that justify a divorce from a biblical standpoint. Um we've talked about those reasons. Um I don't know if you saw the manner in which the divorce was announced and I don't know if this was intentional. I I can't even believe that it would be intentional because I'm not sure who announces the birth of their child and the divorce in the same day. Um, but who knows? I, you know, I, I I really don't know. But just for a refresh, because this was a story that I was going to talk about, the divorce, but I just never got around to talking about it. I just, I just never got around to it, you know. So Ryan Garcia says his marriage to Drea Selena was beyond repair. The boxing star filed for divorce for divorce due to irreconcilable differences. This is according to court docs obtained by TMZ. As previously uh, reported, the 25-year-old... What is that word? What is that word? Pugilist? Yo, TMZ tripping. <laughs> what? Hold on. I need to look up this word real quick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Because I don't know what that means. It's a fancy word for boxer. Okay. 
just say boxer. Y'all tripping. Um, anyway, he announced his split from his wife of nearly three years via his Instagram account Friday night, just minutes after revealing they welcomed their second child together. That's pretty crazy. You know what, bro? They're they're like really cute. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> they're aren't bro, come on. They're really cute together. Like, I can't even front. Um it says in the docs, uh, I didn't really want to show the baby, but I, I'm sorry. In the docs filed last week, Garcia says uh, he and Selena, who got married uh, January 14, 2021, were officially separated on Christmas Day. That's interesting. The 24 and one fighter says he is willing to financially support their two children uh, based on the minor children's reasonable needs. OK, let me scroll down. I don't want to show that he I, he posted it publicly, but I just feel kind of weird about showing people's kids. Um he said in the post, let me see if I could just show the post without showing the baby, possibly. Possibly. No, I can't show it. Okay, let me just read. He said, honored to announce my beautiful first. Uh, so this, he posted this. And then hours after he posted the divorce. So he posted a picture of his newborn uh, son. He said, honored to announce my beautiful firstborn son. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful. I love him so much already. He is so fast already. Took him just eight minutes to arrive. You know where he got that speed from. God did and God will. Henry Leo Garcia, he will be 10 times stronger, 10 times wiser, 10 times better looking. But he will need to work 10 times harder. Thank you, Lord. I love you. Um, it goes on to say that he's going to be paying spousal support for the next 17 months. Half the time they were married. Is that how it works? I don't know. I never really knew how spousal support worked. Is it based on how long you were married and then they just do 50% of that time? Um, or is it, I, I'm assuming it's case by case. Um, it says in the, in the divorce announcement, Garcia said co-parenting is the former couple's top priority and he will continue to focus on um, Bella and Henry's health and well-being. He then went on to say that I believe our mutual devotion to our children is rock solid. I trust that together. We will continue to provide them with love, support, and, st and stability they deserve, he said in the statement. Drea, on the other hand, shared a cryptic, shared cryptic messages on her account, seemingly indicating that there may be more to the story. Well, there's always more to the story. Um, I mean, if we're talking from a biblical standpoint, we would be talking about like adultery, right? So somebody cheated which would, you know, give you justification in that point from a biblical standpoint. Um, I don't know. He didn't really say, they didn't say the full, they didn't say the full story. This was the post that he uh, put up. Man, why is there so many ads on here, bro? Like, what the heck is going on? Okay, anyway. Uh, so this is the post that he posted right after he posted about his newborn baby. This post has since been deleted, but it's on dailymail.com. Um, it says, as I step into a, a new chapter in life, it's with a heavy heart to share that Drea and I have decided to divorce. While this decision marks the end of our marriage, it's important to emphasize that our relationship as co-parents remains our top priority. Throughout our years together, Drea has been an, an incredible partner and an even more extraordinary mother to our two children. I am great. I am deeply grateful for the years we shared and for our and for and for her unwavering commitment to our family. Hmm. As we move forward, my focus remains on the health and well-being of our two beautiful kids. They are and always will be my first priority. I'm fully committed to working together with Drea to make sure our children's needs and best interests always guide our path forward. I mean, if you're, look, listen, let me hold my thoughts. Hold on. I believe our mutual devotion to our children is rock solid, and I trust that together we will continue to provide them with love and support and, and stability they deserve. In this time of transition, we kindly ask for respect in understanding our family's privacy. This is the same thing I said about the Chance the Rapper, the chance the rapper divorce. If you want privacy, why are you speaking on it publicly? Now, I understand. Is it public information when you file for divorce? I'm assuming it probably is because how else would TMZ have the documents? But still, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
he closes by saying, we're thankful for the support of those who have stood by us over the years. Um, a couple of interesting things stood out to me. He said that I'm deeply grateful for the years we shared and for her unwavering commitment to our family. I'm fully committed to working together with Drea to make sure our children's needs and best interests always guide our path forward. So what exactly happened? I mean, I don't want to get too down the road of like gossip and stuff like that, but you know, I'm always very intrigued when somebody is so bold in their faith But yet, is seemingly living a lifestyle publicly that doesn't necessarily line up with that faith that they profess. And I know people are gonna say like, no, stop fruit watching, and you you talk about you know works based salvation, and you know blah blah blah, bro. I'm not. I, I I've never once said that we have to work in order to get into heaven. I never once said that somebody's gonna be perfect. I never said that. I never said that. But when you have a platform, especially the platform that Ryan Garcia has, and when you're so vocal about your faith and about your love for Jesus. I think that that should come across in how you portray yourself on social media. I think that should come across. I think we should we should we should see some evidence. I mean, how else are we truly supposed to know the spiritual health of somebody? The Bible says you'll know them by their fruits, right? So how else are we supposed to know? And especially this is somebody who's supposed to be a believer in Christ. So this is supposed to be our, our you know, our brother in Christ. I'm not just going to sit back and just say oh everything he's doing is a-okay like no i'm gonna be like bro it, it, it seems like you 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 going down that 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 solomon path it seems like you going down that solomon path it seems like you getting all the money you getting all the resources you getting all the you know the clout all the fame and you know you running around with all these different women it's the same thing that happened with solomon and God told Solomon, do not go and, you know, be with those foreign women because they serve foreign gods. They serve false gods. They are going to lead you astray. And what does Solomon do? He wasn't thinking with this head. He wasn't thinking with his heart. He was thinking with his other head. And he went and was wiling out. And guess what happened? All those foreign women who served all those, you know, false gods who were literally sacrificing their children, Solomon got wrapped up in all of that. And look what happened to Solomon. Let's not think that the same thing can't happen to us. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, on one side, there's a statement that says, you know, her unwavering commitment to the family Is there a chance that she cheated? It's a possibility. Is there a chance that he cheated? It's probably a more likely possibility. Who knows? I know that she doesn't, I mean, speaking of his ex-wife, she doesn't appear to be a believer, at least from looking at her Instagram. It doesn't really look like somebody who is concerned about being modest. It doesn't look like somebody who's concerned about, you know, the temptation of, you know, other people based on the content that you post. Um, so maybe that was a conflict. Maybe that, you know, she wasn't a believer. Maybe that was something that was um, causing conflict. I'm sure it, it had to have been. It had to have been. I don't know how, how it couldn't be. If you're a believer and your partner's not, there's going to be a lot of conflict there. But even still in that, that's not justification to get a divorce. 
we're told to stick out that situation. If you're married to an unbeliever, you're supposed to stick out that situation. You're supposed to stay in that situation and you're supposed to be the example so that hopefully one day your unbelieving partner can see your walk with Jesus and be inspired to come to Christ because of the example that you're setting. We're not supposed to be divorcing in those situations. But once again, you know, that kind of stuff happens. I'm not saying it's okay, but I'm simply saying people get divorced for that reason because they find themselves in a marriage with an unbeliever. Maybe they were both unbelievers at the time they got married, or maybe one person was more of like a baby Christian and the other person wasn't a believer at all. And the person who was a baby Christian kept maturing in Christ. And then the gap just kept getting wider and wider and they just couldn't get past that. I don't know. One thing that I do see from the standpoint of Ryan Garcia, um, it's pretty clear that he has an appetite for women, which is completely natural. Like we're men, we're supposed to be attracted to women. Nothing wrong with that, but don't let that appetite consume you because then that starts to become an idol. You start to idolize the women and those women, just like in the case of Solomon, can absolutely, 100% without a doubt, pull you away from God. And you have to be very mindful of your who you surround yourself with, especially as a Christian. You got to surround yourself with better people. You have to surround yourself who, you have to surround yourself with people who aren't afraid to give you a rebuke. And to change your perspective and to get you back on the right path. You have to be very careful, especially when you're surrounding yourself with beautiful women who don't believe in God. The temptation is going to be like no other. And I can only imagine being young, being attractive, having a hundred million dollars, allegedly, but he's definitely a multi, multi-millionaire. I can only imagine the level of access that Ryan Garcia has when it comes to women. But be careful because the more you indulge, the more your appetite is going to grow. And that appetite is going to lead you away from Christ. There's also another point. It's like, bro, I'm just looking at his Instagram um, <laughs> people are gonna say I'm being judgmental and all this stuff. He he say he says that he's a believer in Jesus. Like, there's such thing as a as righteous judgment. Like, there's such thing as like, yo, I see my brother going down a path that is going to lead to death. I'm a, I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna say something. I understand he's a professional boxer. I understand his job is to fight without, you know, a shirt on. I get it. But there is such a thing as male modesty. I feel like I always pick on, you know, the women for not being modest on social media. I don't focus enough on the men. There is such a thing as male modesty. We have to be mindful because as men, we have the same ability to cause the opposite sex to stumble, just like women have the ability to cause us to stumble based on what they're posting on Instagram and on the internet. It's the same thing. We have to be very mindful of that. And I'm not even going to scroll down because I'm not, I'm not even going to scroll down because a lot of his posts at least as of recent, is kind of like thirst trap type of vibes. And I get it. You're newly divorced. I don't know what your status is. I don't know, bro. But there is such a thing as male modesty. And we can 100% cause our sisters to stumble. 100%. So let's not even put them in that situation. Let's be mindful 
of like, yo, I'm not going to post this because I don't want to cause my potential sisters in Christ to stumble. There's another thing also, um, there was this conversation about like, um, cussing and stuff like that. And he posted this, <laughs> Ryan Garcia posted this. He said, to all the Pharisees telling me how, hold on. I'm sorry, I had to burp. Um, he said, to all the Pharisees telling me how can I be Christian or follow God if I cuss? You do realize I'm in a sport where we punch each, where, where, <laughs> where we punch each other in the head, risking our lives. How I express myself is how I express myself before entering battle. Jesus, in fact, ooh, this should be interesting. Jesus, in fact, referred to some but to someone as a moron. I know you want to judge this Christian man and try to find fault in me. I don't have any because I have Jesus. Ooh. You don't have any fault. I get what you're saying. Your sin is forgiven. God doesn't see your sin anymore. You are washed. You are cleansed. Assuming that you have put your faith in God, right? In Jesus Christ. But that doesn't give us a license to keep on sinning. That doesn't give us a license to keep on sinning. You know, it's interesting because like the more mature that I get and the more I progress on my walk with Jesus. And I'm not trying to act like I'm the perfect example of a Christian because I'm definitely not. Definitely not. But the more mature I get, it's like the more sinful I realize I am. The deeper I go and grow in my relationship with Christ, with Jesus, the, the more sinful I realize I am. And it's like I realize more and more every single day the need for a savior. Because, you know, our sins are forgiven. We're born again. But although we're born again, we still war with this flesh because we're here on earth. We're in this flesh, this dying flesh. Our spirit has life, but this flesh is dying and we're living in this flesh. There's a war. The flesh has an agenda and the spirit has an agenda and they're opposed. They're opposed. And I think we have to be mindful of when we're operating according to the spirit and when we're operating according to the flesh. Because it could also be like, think about it like this, because he's saying like, bro, he's saying, don't you realize I'm, 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 I'm in a violent sport? Don't you realize I'm in a violent sport? I'm, I'm, I'm about to go to battle. And this is how I express myself in battle. Well, you could also say the same thing for like a Christian rapper. You know, a Christian rapper could say, oh, don't you realize this, you know, this is the rap game. This is, this is, this is, you know, where they glorify, you know, sleeping with multiple women. This is where they glorify, you know, and, and idolize money and fame. This is where they glorify sin and violence. So of course I, 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 I got to, it's, it's going to translate a little bit in my music because this is the rap game. It's like, don't you see some, anything wrong? Like, we're supposed to be set apart. We're not supposed to be of the world. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be the light in the darkness. We're supposed to be the salt of the world. We're not supposed to conform to the customs and the ways of the world, but we're supposed to be renewed and transformed by way of the Holy Spirit. Like you don't have to do and be like everybody else in your profession. You can be set apart. You can be a boxer and be set apart and serve Christ. 
and be a living sacrifice. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. But don't try to justify those actions. Simply say, you know what? This is something I'm struggling with. This is something that I'm, 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 I'm going to war with against my flesh. And, you know, God's working on me. I respect that because we all have struggles. We all have things that God is still working out. I respect that. But let's not put it on front street. Let's not post it. Let's not continue to divulge in this sinful behavior and act like it's not a problem. You have a massive platform. You have over 20 million people. The opportunity is there. The opportunity for you to use this platform to bring glory to God. But not only that, give people an example of somebody who once was lost but now is found in Christ. And that example doesn't have to be perfect. But show people the process of trying to, to, to achieve that, that holiness. The Bible says, be holy as I am holy. We're not going to be perfect, but we got to pick up our cross every single day. We got to pick up our cross. We have to deny ourselves every single day. And what you have to deny in your life, it's, it's going to look different from what I have to deny in my life because we have different temptations based on whatever we were getting into. And we have to be mindful of that. But to say that there's no fault in you, I'm not God, but Everyone has fault because we're in this flesh. Like we're warring against the flesh. Everyone has fault, you know? And I don't want to bash Ryan because like, I don't know his, I don't know his full story. I don't know his full testimony. Like we can't sit here and expect someone to like be perfect. We can't sit here and expect someone to mirror our walk with Christ, because I don't know what he was getting into before. This might be massive progress in the full timeline of his testimony. You know what I mean? So I don't want to be too overly judgmental, but at the same time, like, you got to surround yourself with some people who can pour into you and kind of give you some wisdom and kind of give you that godly counsel. Um, cut back on the women. Because they're going to lead you astray. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Hmm. I don't know, man. I'm sure some of y'all going to be in my comments talking about, oh, you're talking about a workspace salvation. I'm not. Because if that was the case, I would be on my way to hell. Because, <laughs> bro, ain't no works. There's no works that are going to save us. Our works are filthy rags. It's faith and faith alone. But I think how we live as Christians and the perception that we are choosing to put out, because these are all decisions. These are decisions. You're deciding to post these things. These are decisions that you're making. I think all of these things need to be thought about a little bit deeper. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments, like this video. I'm out, y'all.